Hey everybody, it's Crystal with Pure Photoshop Actions, and today I'm just going to show you a quick tip on the rule of thirds um, and how to um, quickly crop for the rule of thirds in Photoshop. If you have CS5, then this isn't really relevant um, because you have a built-in rule of thirds into your crop tool, um, but everybody else does not have that. So um, we're going to quickly <clears throat> show how to do it using a custom shape tool. Um, which looks like a grid. So what we have here is we have just have a picture um, and as you can see they're very centered um, and the rule of thirds states that um, you basically break your picture up into th three um, quadrants and so you have th like basically three boxes up here, three here, and three here and um, the eyes find it more appealing if the, the point of the picture that you want to draw the attraction to, so like them, is um, their faces or whatever it is that you're trying to draw attention to is where the two lines or two lines intersect. So it makes makes a little uh, like a T. Um, and so you're going to see it when, once we bring up this grid. So what you're going to do is you're going to come over here to your custom shape tool. And if you don't see it, like you, you may see um, like these type of tools. So just right click that and then you click the custom shape tool. Uh, make sure this top little box right here, shape layers is selected and then you're going to come over here and you're going to choose a shape. If you don't see all these shapes that's easy just come over here click this little button and select all and hit append and then you're going to find the shape. And um, what it's going to look like, it's going to look like a little grid. So scroll down, scroll down, scroll down and here it is right here. It's going to have three, three, three boxes so nine boxes total if you click the wrong one you're gonna see the shape up there so make sure you just click select that box and then you can just select up here and to get out of here um, and now what you're gonna do is you're going to you can do it one of two ways you can drag it over the entire picture okay so let's do it like that and it'll put this uh, like custom shape so what I what you're seeing is like I was saying that right now they're like right in the center um, and artistically it's more appealing if the subject of the picture is in this area up here, this area over here, right here, or right here. It just is just something about how we look at pictures. If, if, if it doesn't, um, if the picture isn't obeying the rule of thirds, sometimes there just seems like there's something off with the picture but you can't put your finger on it. That's usually, that, that could be what it is. So what it is, so what we just did is we laid that shape on top. So you're going to come back over here and select your background layer, and you're going to and you're going to duplicate it by hitting Control J, and then you're going to free transform it. So you're going to hit Control and T, and you're going to see this box pop up. So what we're going to do is I really like personally. Again, this is where it comes down to like personal taste and your artistic vision. I like having this little bridge over here in the background. I don't necessarily super love the skinny tree over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to drag their faces to this area right here, which is then in turn going to get rid of this, but preserve this uh, background scenery here. So if you hold down the shift key while dragging this, it will maintain its proportion so it won't distort your picture. Um, if you do, you could end up dragging it like this if you don't hold down the shift key and that's not cute. So if you hold down the shift key, it will only let you go out diagonally, which will then, uh, like I said, maintain the proportions of the picture. So we're just going to drag them up. And now his eye is right where those two points cross. So you hit enter to end the free transform. And then what you'll do is you'll come over here and here's your shape. You'll deselect it and drag it to the trash. So what we have here now is a much more appealing picture um, than that. And again, there might be a reason why you want somebody in the center. Uh, you know, it is an artistic vision. Um, rule of thirds is just a rule. Sometimes rules are meant to be broken. So again, like, you know, go with the feel that you want for the picture. But in general, um, the eye wants to the eye wants to wander to those intersecting points in the picture without even realizing it. So, um, and that's just much, in my opinion, it's just much more eye pleasing. Um, so then you would shift control E to merge the layers, um, or whatever you want to do. 
So let me come over here and take a snapshot of this. And let's start at the beginning, because you can do it a different way. You can take your custom shape tool, make sure it's still the grid, and you can lay it wherever you want. So let's say you lay it like this, okay, and then you drag it to where you want it to fall. So again, we wanted it to fall right over his eye, so I'm happy with that. So then you hit enter, then you come over here and you grab your crop tool and you come down to your background layer and you just crop that sucker. And there you have that. So again, like, you know, there's different ways you can do it, but it looks it'll look different too. So, um so let's come over here and take a snapshot of this. So here was our first one and here's our second one. It looks like we cropped out more of this area over here by doing it. You know, you could have made we could have made the crop this custom shape tool bigger you know to allow more space over here or over here you know whatever you want so but I like this one better I feel like I just love this little like bokeh back here so um, what I'll do is I'll just do a really fast edit on this it'll just take me a couple seconds so what I'll do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna run cloud nine and as you get to know me you will know that every image that I personally touch through Photoshop will have cloud nine ran on it so you don't even have to ask because I just love this action it has a warming layer on it um, it's a little strong for this picture so I'll lower it to probably about 50 percent and then I'll come up to the cuddly soft layer and I'll choose a white brush uh, 100 percent make sure that this little box here is selected because if you just kind of select the layer it's not going to select that box and it's not going to do anything when you when you paint on. So make sure that that little box is around the black mask. And white brush, make sure it's a soft brush. Don't choose a hard brush, use a soft one. So you can make your brush bigger by using the bracket keys which are next to the letter P. And I will just brush on really fast. And I may need to lower the opacity of it a little bit, but we will look at it once we are done with it. Let's see. And make it smaller. You'll find that once you get used to the keyboard shortcuts, like editing goes by a lot faster just because you're not having to go over to the brush palette and all this different area all these different areas over here. You can just do everything on the keyboard and it makes it a lot faster. So now what I'm going to do is, because I did the background at 100%, if I was to lower the opacity here, I don't want it as strong here. So I'll come up here and I'm going to lower the brush to probably about 37, 30, 30 to 35%-ish. And I'm going to brush right over the edge of her hair, right here. Just kind of make, so they just kind of blend into the background and, and they're kind of soft. Again, it is a personal taste, a personal style. Um, you know, I just like soft images. I don't like hard like I like soft colors. Um, I like the background to be soft. I like the my clients to kind of merge into the um, background, not um, be all crunchy and like hard. I guess I don't know how else to explain it. So I know that personally, I'm not going to use this soft, this optional soft layer. That's what it would look like if you did. Again, it's a personal style. Um, I just love the coloring in this picture, so I'm going to leave it exactly as it is. And oh my gosh, my eye is itching the heck out of me. Okay. So now I'm going to merge this Shift Control E. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to brighten her, brighten them up a little bit. So let's do. Where is it at? Oh, I'm in set two. Come over here to brighten that baby up. It's going to be a little strong. But I'm going to come and I'm just going to lower the opacity a little bit. And I think that is good. Okay, now you can do a couple things. So I will come down to my just a pinch set. I'm going to run a pinch of a tone. I just absolutely love everything about this action. <clears throat> it is one of my favorite actions also. Um, if you leave it at 100%, well, it's actually defaults to 60%. That's what it is. You can make it go stronger. You can make it go lighter. I don't want it as strong, so I think I'm going to put it probably about 25%. <coughs> and then 
I'm going to merge those, which is Shift Control E, and then I'm going to run a pinch of color as soon as that's done. A pinch of color. Okay, now it's really strong, so I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to lower it. I'm going to pay attention to what it looks like over here, and once I get to a happy place, then I'm going to start masking off their skin. So I think that's a good number. So now that this mask is white, that means it's showing everything that the action did. So I need to make sure I have a black brush. So I'm going to come and I'm going to raise my brush to 100% and just brush it off of their faces and their arms. And you'll see where I brushed it off of right there. Okay. And I think that's good. So there's the before and there's the after with that just a little punch of color and for me like that's that right there is a completely finished picture for me I'm I'm happy with that I don't like super over processed pictures but um, you know it, it is everybody's personal style so I'll come over here and take a take a snapshot so you can see the before and after so this was the er image that as we originally started this was once we cropped it and that's the finished image so once we cropped it, this was the other crop. So once we cropped it and the finished image. And I just love how soft it is and how warm it is. And I just love it. Okay, so let's close out of that one. So now we have this one. Well, let's come to this one actually. So now we have the ring shot. And again, what we'll do is we'll do the rule of thirds. So we'll just come over here, custom shape tool. We'll just drag that sucker right on and we can do it one of, one of two ways. We can have the ring come up here, we can have the ring come down here. I think let's try it this way and see what it looks like. Let's bring it down. And if you need to change the size of the shape tool, just make sure you're selected on that layer and control T it. Hold down the shift key and you can change the size. Easy peasy. Okay, let's do that. So now, because I think when I was looking at it, I'm liking, um, and my cat is trying to attack my screen and my mouse. Okay, let's bring it down just a tad. Okay, and now let's bring it over. And bring it down a little bit. Okay, that's good. So now you can you can crop it. Oh, we need to move that out just a little bit. There we go. And we will get rid of the shape. And there we go. So again, like I'll just edit this one really fast. We'll come up and run the color pop. Um, look at that color, baby to be a little strong because I like the, the the saturation of that already that color so I'll just come and use a black brush at 100% and just kind of brush off the color pop off of that so it kind of just makes it really dark and kind of clogs it up a little bit so um, but I love what it's doing to everything else so I'll shift control E to merge that come over again cloud nine like I said every picture <laughs> And what it's going to do for this picture is actually awesome because it's already got a lot of awesome bokeh. I'm going to go ahead and um, decrease the opacity of the warming layer for me. Um, it was shot with my 100 millimeter macro. Um, so it's got a lot of mac a lot of bokeh already. But I just want to kind of soften kind of like the noise back here because I remember shooting it at a pretty high ISO. Um, and I was shooting on my Canon 40D. So it doesn't handle noise as well. So by using this um, cuddly soft layer from the uh, Cloud9, it kind of gets rid of that noise back there. Um, and it just makes it softer. And it'll just make it more dreamlike because it'll be softer. Um, let's get rid of that a little bit. That's a little strong right here. So if you make a mistake, you can just use an opposite color brush to erase it off. So here is the before and there's the after. It just really draws your attention to that ring. So shift control E it and then I'm going to delete delete this optional tone layer. And then the last thing I'm going to do is soften sparkly. 
and I'm going to run the eye pop portion of it on the um, on the ring. So I'll come over and select the black layer mask. Don't just select the layer because you notice that the box isn't selected so you have to physically select that black box. Come over here, white brush, 100% and I'm just going to brush it on right there over the ring. So what you have here is your before and your after. It just kind of makes that ring just pop a little bit more. And you can again use the soft skin to just kind of soften the background even just a little bit more. Um, you know, kind of make it stand out just that much more. And there we go. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take a snapshot. So here was our before and here was our after. Perfect. And this one really fast. So again, <coughs> we're going to come over here, custom shape tool, and I want this area to be the focal point because that's the part that's in focus. So I'll just kind of, but I think I want it to fall into this focal plane over here. So let me get rid of that because I'd like the pop of color right there. So if I bring this down, then I have a little pop of color. And again, this is all going to be personal taste. And then um, come and crop this. Okay, and there we go. That's what we have. Um, and I just love the little pop of color there. And then again, I'll just run. Look at that color, baby. And it just kind of pops that color. Like it takes it from nice to wow. And lower the opacity just a tad. Cloud nine again is going to warm it up just a tad. And it's it's pretty warm, so I'll probably delete. Uh, or lower the warming layer a lot. Um, we'll see what it looks like. Yeah, let me lower that a tad. Then come right here. Uh, white brush, 100%. And just brush over this area so it's not as noisy. And I think that and I'll usually brush the cloud nine on wherever there is natural bokeh. I don't try to create bokeh with it because it will look fake. Um, and so that's that's just my rule of thumb. I just soften out the bokeh that's already there and um, that's what we do. Okay, so now delete this, shift control E, come over to my history, take a snapshot. This was the before, and this was the after. All right, so that's just a quick, um, quick tutorial on how to use the custom shape tool with the grid as a rule of thirds um, cropping tool.